hey you welcome back to another video thank you for clicking on this video and i'm sure you will enjoy this one so today we will be doing a silk press and we will also be looking at hair porosity so grab a drink get comfy and let's get into this one so you guys during my year in beauty school and maybe one to two years as an assistant I was not equipped with the amount of knowledge that I needed to understand hair porosity. And I think the reason for this could be that I developed a mental block to it. Because in beauty school, of course they taught us this topic, but because teachers and students alike would would say that it is very complicated and hard to understand i just thought that i just can't be bothered with it it's too much it's it's too difficult to learn and master and i just feel like i created a mental block towards um hair porosity you know However, after a couple of years of be being an assistant, I realized that hair porosity is very vital when you are into hair care. It is a vital, vital, vital part of hair care. So I knew I just had to master this. And I just went head on and did my own researches. And, you know, from experience also, I get to learn more because now I have over 10 years of experience in the salon on different type of hair. I get to see and experience the different categories um, on the hair porosity and I've now mastered it. It's very safe to say I have mastered it and I know how to care for the different type of hair porosity and so I'm very confident to bring this video to you so I'm pretty sure that you will learn something from this what is hair porosity no porosity is your hair's ability to absorb or soak up and hold in moisture and products that you have applied simply put Hair porosity is divided into three categories, low, medium, and high. If you were to look at a strand of hair under a microscope, you would see a fish scale-like um, look. This is referred to as the cuticle layer of the hair or the outer layer of the hair. Now, this look much like um, fish scale and it is made up of a tough, um, carotene protein material that you also will find in your nails and with that being said let's get into the different categories of hair porosity now low porosity is where the cuticle that we just spoke about is close together right and medium porosity is where the cuticle is less tightly um, bonded and high porosity is where the cuticles are more widely spread. So they are more separated. They are more open. Listen up, guys. A friendly reminder. There are no good or bad hair type. It is all about learning how to care for the beautiful hair that the good Lord gave you. Let's dive deeper into the different category of porosity. Low porosity here has a low absorption rate and has trouble absorbing moisture and hydration. Two conditions that you will notice in low porosity here is that the hair will take a very long time to dry after a wash and product buildup happens very fast. Moving on to medium porosity. Medium porosity here has a moderate to normal absorption rate and has an easier time absorbing and retaining moisture. What you will find with medium porosity here is that the hair doesn't take a very long time to dry after a wash and the hair is easy to style with um, whether it be hot tools or protective styles it holds the style very well and holds it for a longer period of time moving on to high porosity 
High porosity hair has a high absorption rate and has trouble retaining moisture. Now, what, what happens? Well, go back to the chart that we have just um, shown. The high porosity um, diagram is where the hair or the cuticle of the hair is wider um, apart, right? It's wide apart and it is basically lifted. So what happens here is that as well as it is easy to absorb because it have a high absorption rate, it is also easy for the moisture and the hydration to escape. So as you put it in, that's so quickly it goes out back. So you have to figure out a way to close that cuticle after you have put in your moisture and hydration right so these are some of the things that you will find when your hair is high porosity the hair is going to dry out very quickly after you you've shampooed your hair you you've, have you ever shampooed your hair or a client here and after you've shampooed and put in your deep um moisturizing mask your deep treatment all of the hydrating product that you may use you realize that after you rinse your hair it has no definition no curl definition it just looks like an afro when you would think that your hair is supposed to be nicely hydrated and the curls will pop and become defined now that is one of the condition you will find when your hair is high porosity Another one will be um, hair gets frizzy easily with no definition at all. Just like I said, there is no definition to no wave, no curls. So because the cuticles are open, there it is so much easier for the the humidity, everything to get on get on under that cuticle. So you find that your hair is not smooth. It is just frizzy and it's it will just look undone now let's look at how to care for the different categories in hair porosity so for low porosity here use lightweight oils use heat when deep conditioning your hair so when you are deep conditioning conditioning your hair to add moisture and to hydrate your strands make sure to use a hooded dryer um, put on a cap and get some heat in now what this helps to do is because the hair in low porosity is so porous the cuticles are flat right so we need some heat in order to rise that cuticle a little bit so that the moisture can get under that cuticle and go um hydrate the hair right so you are going to want to use heat to help the moisture to go in all right and it is always good to steam at least once per month to steam your hair Steaming is very good for low porosity hair. Avoid very heavy products. Um, treat and prevent built up. So at least once a month, you're going to want to shampoo your hair with a clarifying shampoo. Now, you have to be careful when you use protein when your hair is low in porosity. You have to make sure that you are getting a protein treatment um, by a professional and that you really need a protein treatment right because as i said the hair is already so porous and the cuticle is tightly um, packed you want to be very careful with any form of protein that you're applying onto the hair it it this doesn't mean that your hair is protein sensitive not at all you would have to get um, a professional to look at your hair um, and they will tell you if your hair is protein sensitive or not 
and last but not least you are going to want to make sure that you're using a satin or a silk pillowcase or if you have like a head tie if you tie your hair at night make sure that it is from satin or silk material next up how to care for medium porosity hair now people say uh, medium porosity hair is the perfect balance they refer to medium porosity hair as the healthiest hair right um no i believe that any hair is healthy whether you have low medium or high porosity hair you just need to know how to care for the type of hair that you have and you have to know product knowledge you have to be able to choose and select your products properly and to care for medium porosity hair you will need to keep your hair hydrated keep your ends trim and condition use a mild shampoo once or twice per week clarify once a month to remove built up and to maintain the scalp's balance and use lightweight products now let's go over to high porosity hair now high porosity hair tends to be thirsty so you are going to have to make sure that you are reading your labels when you go out to purchase products and you want to make sure that you opt for products that is saying things like moisturizing hydrating and so on because the hair cuticle is further apart they are more space so as we we, we said earlier that the product that you will put in is going to be easy to get in but it's also easy to get out so the high porosity has an high absorption rate and it makes sense because as you see on the diagram the the cuticles are so spaced out so most definitely what goes in will come back out so this is actually a good time for you to after you've had your treatment and you've hydrated the hair properly you add some oils lightweight oils to seal to help to seal that cuticle layer so you can try to trap some of the moisture that you've just put in and oils like um sweet almond oil grapeseed oil those oils that are lighter right coconut oil is heavy castor oil castor oil is too heavy um olive oil is also too heavy i find that sweet almond oil and uh, grapeseed oil th those are two of my favorite lightweight oil so in caring for high porosity hair you are going to want to make sure that you are getting your regular trims don't shampoo too often shampoo once per week that should be good um never skip your conditioner use a deep moisturizing treatment every other week if not every week and skip tight styles now the most important question to me when I was learning the hair's porosity was how do I know what porosity I'm dealing with? How do I know the client's um, hair's porosity? How do I know my hair's porosity? Now I believe that testing the hair's porosity is one of the best, best and only way to find out what product to use and also how to care for that hair type. So this is the part where we talk about how to test um, the hair's porosity. Take a clean strand of hair that is free from products. Best time to do this is after a good shampoo. Put the strand of hair into a clear glass of water and watch it. If the hair floats to the top of the water, it is low porosity. And if the hair slowly sinks to the bottom, or settles in the middle then that is medium porosity and if if the hair sinks straight to the bottom that is high porosity if I didn't learn anything in beauty school <laughs> which I know I learned a lot 
um, I learned how to test the hair's veracity because as I just said it was one of the most important thing to me I thought hey if I knew how to test the hair's veracity then I know everything else but no that wasn't the case I needed to know how to care for it, what product to use, how to go about using hot tools on the hair, the whole nine yard. So I learned from early out how to test the hair's porosity, which was just a fraction of what I really needed to know. I remember one time I was teaching someone about um, porosity and she asked a valid question she asked can a person have mixed porosity definitely definitely and it in my opinion that's a very 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 good question because it is possible and what I've found I have been dealing with a lot of clients that has mixed porosity so having mixed porosity is very common. Now I have another question. Can we change the porosity of the hair? I don't have the answer for that just yet, but if anyone knows, leave it in the comment section. Uh, what I do know is that we can learn how to care for the type of hair that we have and basically feeds it with what it needs to thrive. But to actually get the hair from a low porosity or a high porosity to a medium porosity, which people would consider to be <coughs> the healthiest type, um, I don't know how to do that. So as I said, if anyone have done it, know how to do it, heard of it being done, leave it in the comment section. However, what I do if I'm working with a client that whenever I feel their hair, it feels like their hair has different texture throughout the head. I would take um, strands of hair from different areas of the head and I test them each. So when I do that, I can tell whether a client have low porosity at the front, high porosity at the back, medium porosity in the middle, and by doing that, I can definitely make sure that I am putting the right products where it is needed, you know. So that's my way of making sure that I am catering for all the type of um, porosity if a client should have different um, porosity throughout their head. Now, this is super helpful if you are a wash and go type of person. Now, if you are a wash and go type of person and you find that sometimes your curls at the back is so nice and the curls at the top is not so nice, then probably you need to test your hair's porosity both at the top and the back. Make sure that it is the same or if it is different, you are going to have to use different products on the two area just so you can have the nice definition of curls that you're looking for throughout your entire head. And with that, we wrap up for hair porosity for today. If you have any question, please leave it in the comment section below or if you have anything to tell me then I would be happy to hear and if you like this type of content please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one and please tell a friend to tell a friend share this video with somebody who you think will get value from this video I would appreciate that and as always thank you so much for my people that has been working with me from day one and thank you so much for always liking the video thank you so much for watching my video and supporting the channel so let's get into this beautiful silk press first thing I want to say this client her hair is medium porosity right 
um, as you could see her hair didn't really dry out quickly but I had still put a, a steam cap over it when I'm blow drying it because I don't want the water to be completely dried from the hair so I didn't have to have to do that because her hair is medium porosity it's not high porosity where the hair dries out very quickly so if you are giving a silk press to a guest who has high porosity you cannot allow the hair to dry out um, you have to put a cap over it to make sure that you're retaining that moisture you're just helping the hair to do what it's supposed to do and by doing this your silk press will come out nicely and this is so because you're using your blow dryer to do most of the work if you can get your blow dry to be nice and soft and the hair is well stretched then you are going to use the blow dryer to the 80 percent of the job which is a goal because your flat iron is only doing 20 percent of the job and to me that's better and this is why i am always able to make one pass with my flat iron and the hair becomes silky because I did most of the job in the blow drying process. Question you guys, which do you think is more damaging to the hair or which do you think gets hotter, a blow dryer or a flat iron? Which do you think can damage the hair if misused? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. So you guys look at this her hair is so silky and are you seeing that sheen listen i don't think the camera did it justice the sheen was real even the client was commenting on the sheen she was like it is so shiny yes it is it is lovely look at that sheen you guys we did this color well i did a color correction on her hair about mm, maybe six months ago i did a color correction on her hair because she went and got her color done and it wasn't done properly i mean it was it was just not looking professionally done and it was there was so many shades going through the her head it was one shade over here one shade over here and I color corrected that so it is growing out now um, but it's still looking good now we're giving her a little trim 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 her hair was doing well so because we had well the last time we did a trim was when I had done the color correction on her hair so that could have been six months ago but not bad at all There was some line of demarcation in the color, especially at the back, but we were still happy with the result because I did my best with what I was given and it came out lovely because when the hair is um, lying flat and resting over each section, then the blend is way better. gave her a little layer we gave her some long layers um, because her hair is thick I thought that layers would be perfect for her you know I didn't want to give her like blunt blunt a blunt cut so I was just going for the same shape that I had given her in the previous haircut And I'm just going with um, point cutting um, technique because I didn't want the lines or the layers to be blunt. I wanted to make sure that they are nicely blended. So whenever I am looking for a blended um, feather off, I go in with my point cutting and not just cutting straight across. I 
and I went ahead and fixed her up with a nice face framing layer love 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 a good face framing layer now what I don't love is when um, they cut too much hair from the middle the top of the client's head um, I what I would normally do is to use the air as a guide so I part the the front off for the face framing layer from ear to ear so I'm just layering just the very front of the hair and I'm not going way into the top of the the head where the hair lies and this is it you guys I'm using some a little tubes of bio silk and I am really you know rubbing that through mainly the ends and the roots as well and I'm just squeezing that in to make sure that I don't disrupt the little um, bend that I gave her with the flat iron until it's cool then I comb through Ooh, look at that Look, guys, look at that cut. 